don't panic. It's not the blue screen of death. <laughs> Your computer hasn't blown up on you. Um, what you're looking at is a sheet of fish paper. <laughs> so I was starting to get really low on fish paper and I think the last, I had gotten a sheet somewhere uh, a good while ago but in between that I needed some more and I bought one of those little rolls from GC Electronics and honestly I hate it when I have to do that but it was in a pinch, got a small roll of that stuff. The reason I don't like that is it sits rolled up for Lord knows how long in a warehouse somewhere before it gets shipped to me. And then when it does come to me, I unroll it and it just stays curled. <laughs> and trying to get that to lay flat when you're trying to glue it down to something is a nightmare. Or trying to form, you know, little insulation sheets out of it. So, I did what I normally do. Went to the Google Monster and see what the Google Monster spit back <laughs> when I did a search for fish paper. And I happened to run across the company. Uh, they had basically had what I wanted. Not only do they have fish paper, they have, there's actually two sheets here. Uh, this sheet you're looking at, and then the sheet behind it, which is exactly the same, except it has 3M adhesive on the back of it. Um, and I saw they had that, I was like, ooh, it's got PSA, or you know, pressure sensitive adhesive already applied to it. So I could really need to get a sheet of that, because I'd never had that before. Um, and it would be so handy, because a lot of times what I'm using fish paper for is to stick it down to a piece of metal that I'm going to be then basically setting a circuit board on top of and I need to insulate it. So I don't have to worry about using spray contact adhesives or anything. I can just cut this stuff out. Well, not this sheet, the sheet that's behind it. But basically just cut it out with a pair of scissors or whatever and then pull the, the laminate off the back and just stick it down and I'll be good to go. So in any case, the, the company, I didn't notice where they were located. So I emailed them how much for a sheet of FPO20 and FPO20 uh, with the adhesive with the PSA, the sticky stuff on the back. And I got a reply from Ty at the custom, from, from the company, from American Micro Incorporated. Um, custom components and also soundproof cow. It's a couple companies all in one. Um, and I noticed in her signature line there was the address. And it's Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And I'm thinking to myself, well, crap, that's right on the other side of the mountain for me. I'm over that direction at least maybe once a week, once every two weeks, picking up parts and supplies and going to the hardware store and whatnot. So I said, can I pick it up? And, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, and I also told them, I was like, well, and I went on their website then and really went over all of their products. And I was like, well, you know, if you give me a, some little small samples of stuff, I was like, little cutoffs, I don't care what they are, but, you know, I'd do a short video. I'm, then I'm not receiving any compensation for this whatsoever. What you're looking at there, I paid for. So it's not like I even got this for free. I had to pay for this. So there's no compensation involved. Um, I'm just supporting a local company. Um, it was a veteran-founded company way back in the day um, and is now currently owned by a woman. So veteran, veteran started and now currently woman-owned and run. So go down here to the bench. Here's their cards. I picked up a couple cards while I was there. So this is who uh, I initially contacted was Ty, the account manager, and then actually spoke to Jolie. <laughs> and I kind of caught him off guard because I said I would, <clears throat> excuse me, I would stop by tomorrow. But yeah, it's supposed to snow tonight and tomorrow, and I didn't feel like driving up over the mountain <laughs> in the snow. So I kind of snuck in on them today, <laughs> unexpectedly. Now they <clears throat> they had a little sample pack together, but they were still working on just a really quick kind of a write up on on the products, a brief product description. Um, they were actually in the process of typing it up, and I said, you don't need to worry about that. I said, as long as it's not written in hieroglyphics, your handwritten paper is fine. So that's that's what she handed me, but. Um, yeah, so there you can see they're located in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And here's something I just noticed that's kind of cute. The soundproof cow. They also do... Now, I'm not going to cover any of this because I didn't get any samples of this. I kind of, as an afterthought, wish I had gotten because I do occasionally use soundproofing <laughs> products when I'm building speaker enclosures. So I probably should have picked up some of the sound, different type of soundproofing products that they have. Maybe I can do that in the future. Um... I just noticed they have a 10% off code here. It's sound440. Well, that's their address, 440. Hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, it sounds like you could use some sound solutions. <laughs> but anyhow, that's, that's, that's the company. Um, so, USA Company, 
they do all kinds of stuff uh, and I'll show you a lot of the products that you know, the, the little samples that I've got of the different products but you can see the lots basically all types of electrical insulation products and they also have different types of foam products one of the big things is they can do custom die cutting and laser cutting so you know if you're manufacturing even on a small scale uh, you may need parts that are custom formed you know a certain size to fit in something they can do it for you hmm sill pad oh I didn't notice that I have to even go back myself and look <laughs> I use sill pads um, but yeah, just, just, they just run the gamut of anything to do with electronic in the form of material stock. They probably deal with it. Um, another thing, I don't think it's on this paper. Oh, it, there it is. Yeah, they do hot plating. Um, so they do hot solder plating of materials. CNC machining, you know, plating, custom soldering, um, insulation materials, rigid foam. Yeah, you name the foam material. Like I said, just anything to do with electronics when it comes to stock. You know, the kind of products you'd use when you're assembling something. They probably have, they would probably have you covered. So, let me get these big sheets out of the way here. Because these things are big. They're like 28 by 40 inches or something. And here, actually, you can see the sheet behind it has the... 3M adhesive on one side, and this is a 0 .02 in thickness. So, if you uh, deal with vintage electronics, you're probably very familiar with fish paper. Um, it's used in a lot of products as just that, and, it, and it's not even vintage. Even today, you take apart stuff like switch mode power supplies a lot of times you'll see a sheet of fish paper insulating between the circuit board and the housing that the switch mode power supply is in it's there for insulation purposes so um, fish paper is a vulcanized fiber material you know it has really good um, insulation electrical insulation properties and one of the nice things about it is especially if you're working on electronics because electronics devices get hot and cold, especially if you're dealing with old tube type equipment, and that's why you'd see fish paper and old tube type stuff was it's it's resistant uh, to changes in temperature, you know, hot and cold, unlike plastics, where plastics will warp and can melt on you. Fish paper doesn't do that. So, you know, here's a just a saying you just saw the fish paper, but it, you can get it in different colors. That was blue, like this one here, this is gray, and this is the that second sheet that I had there it has the pressure sensitive adhesive on it. And yeah, this, that is some, it's definitely 3M. It is some st <laughs> sticky stuff. But uh, I almost wish I'd have gotten some of these other products after I really got. Once they handed me these samples and I got home and then looked up a little, did a little bit more research online, and that's my fault for not doing more research online before I went there. I almost wish I'd have gotten maybe one sheet of the fish paper, but some of these other products, because I think they'd actually come in a little bit more handy than the fish paper. If there's one downfall to fish paper is, now it is flexible, you saw that, it, it flexes, but it's actually here now this is not their product this came out of something out of the early 1970s okay an old electronic device and but it demonstrates the problem with fish paper a lot of the other products they have paper pulp style type products are they look the same I don't even I don't, I'm not gonna say they smell the same because I didn't smell them but you know they have a very similar texture and feel but the problem with fish paper is it is flexible but only to a point the big problem is if you try to make a sharp 90 degree bend, it breaks. Now, I'm not going to say that stuff down here because it seems a little bit more flexible than this stuff. I don't think it would snap quite. Oh, shoot, we have a piece right here. We'll just see how flexible this stuff is. See if it snaps when we get to 90 degrees. Huh? Ah. Actually, it's holding up pretty good. Up oh, there, it snapped, but it didn't break <laughs> almost like glass, like this old antique stuff did. But yeah, you can see it's it's cracked, so it can you can only go so far, even even with their stuff before before it actually breaks. So they have some other products that would fill that gap, and that's why I kind of wish I'd have gotten some of them because occasionally that's what I'm doing. In uh, like, if you've ever seen me restoring old Siltronics 1011D, Swan radios, a lot of those, they had the AC power socket on the back of the radio comes in on the top of the chassis, not down on the bottom side. So when you take the top cover off, if you're working on that radio, the fuse holder and the power socket 
are accessible from the top and if you accidentally brush your hand over that bzzz, you just got electrocuted so if you've ever seen what I do is is I make up a little shield out of out of fish paper I, I bend up a little shield basically bracket to stick over top of that so not just me but future technicians in the future don't have to worry even a customer you know if they're changing tubes out and they plug it in you know with the top cover off and run their hand across that they don't have to worry about getting electrocuted well they have some other products that would be handy for that they have the VHR 115 and EFR so the VHR 115 is a multi-ply material that's made up of unbleached actually both of these are made of unbleached craft pulp but this one has acrylic polymers in it um, again kind of like fish paper good electrical insulation um, this one however is also good because it's a uh, low water absorption absorption um, and it's an ex you know they say it's an excellent substitute for fish paper but it has the advantage of being foldable unlike fish paper that cracks when you get to that basically 90 degree angle this stuff and this stuff now this they had little crimp lines in it and I've already I playing around with it had folded it but yeah you can see this stuff you can fold over so you can make up little little shields just like I do in those radios you know because that's basically what I'm using a lot of times using this stuff for is to make a shield over an exposed electrical socket or you know, plug or something in an old piece of vintage equipment but well there's the VHR 115 and then the EFR is very similar like I say it's made from an unbleached craft pulp but you can actually see there's a crimp line so they can do this to you know they can if you get stuff custom ordered from them they can put these little crimp lines in there which would be where you would bend it at okay but yeah this is the same the difference is this is flame retardant so good for really high heat applications or where you need you know flame proof material so and like I said, I wish I'd man, I wish I'd I gotten a sheet of one of these, and in the same same thickness. And that's another thing with all of these products. Um, most of these feel like they're right around. Actually, this one feels a little thicker, but these two are around probably well 115. That might be well, no, that's I think that's the part number. But yeah, it's oh probably 0.015 in thickness. These two pieces, where the stuff that I bought is 0.02 inches. Um, they also do FR4. Now this is G10 grade FR4, and FR4. If you deal with electronics, you know what FR4 is. You've seen it and touched it, and you might not have known it was called FR4. That's what most circuit boards, good high quality circuit boards, are made out of nowadays. Is F <clears throat> is FR4. Um, which is a this is made up of an alkali free glass cloth and it's impregnated with a epoxy resin under you know, really high pressure and heat but you can see this is a lot thicker so again like all their other products you can get it in lots of different thicknesses the advantage of stuff like FR4 is of course you can make circuit boards out of it but of course you can also make stuff like this you can get they can do all the custom machining you know CNC machining on stuff like this for you know if you need insulating brackets or whatnot it's very rigid yeah I stand no chance of yeah forget it I can't even break this little yeah I'll break my fingers before I break that stuff <laughs> it's extremely strong if you've ever tried to break even a piece of thin uh, FR4 circuit board you'll know how strong this stuff is but yeah this has like one of the highest electrical dielectrics of pretty much any of the materials they make because it's because it's basically circuit board um, and you can get this all different types types from them I highly recommend if you are interested in any of this type of product especially if you're a manufacturer you make stuff go to their website and check out all their products um, GPO3 kind of falls in the same category. It's actually on their website. It does fall in the same category that they have the FR4 listed. Um, this is GPO3. This is a glass woven cloth, but this is impregnated with a polyester resin. Um, and you'll they use this apparently this is used a lot in uh, high voltage areas you know, switch gears and barrier supports and high voltage TV components and stuff like that but again it's made, made with glass uh, big difference here is it's polyester resin instead of epoxy resin like FR4 is but as you can see it can be machined into you know, insulating washers and gaskets again it's yeah, I don't even know if I could 
I might be able to snap that if I grab that there and push. Man, that's strong. I may have bent it a little bit. <sighs> yeah, even that is really, really strong. You can see the impressions in my fingers. <laughs> strong stuff, folks. But, yeah, they can do, as you can see, they can do all of the, the custom machining on it. So if you need parts like that made up. Um, another product is polyester film. Probably everything electronic you own nowadays and lots of other products be it uh, food containers or I mean just seems like everything has polyester in one form or another in it today it's even hard to see because it, it's a little clear oh right there you can see it it's a little clear disc it was machined out for something this looks like a could could have been for like a s internal insulating wafer inside of a switch maybe or something like that but you know it's very flexible um, very stable it's really strong stuff uh, really low uh, shrinkage. It's good in high temperature environments. I mean, and they use this in everything from making capacitors, the packing material, transformers, motors. I mean, you can use this stuff for window film. With proper treatments, you can print on this. You can apply UV coatings. Um, you can, with pressure sensitive adhesives, you can put stick this to glass. And there's actually companies that uh, sell now. I don't think they do it, but there, I know there are companies out there that use this same product as a glass treatment, where they basically laminate glass with this polyester type film. And that way, it's it's not that it's bulletproof, but it's hurricane, what they call hurricane-proof glass. And that way, when the glass gets hit by a flying tree branch or something, or your neighbor flies by and runs into your window, the glass doesn't shatter. It's stuck in between the two layers of, of polyester. But, um, yep, so they you know, they can do, as you can see, you know, all the custom, custom cutting for stuff like this. And I might even get a sheet of that with a pressure-sensitive adhesive, because that would also make a really nice, uh, you know, product to be able to use for making small little insulation sheets and whatnot. Um, another product they have, this is a LE Phenolic, and they have a couple different types. Again, go to their way. Most of these products, I've only got one sample of one specific type, but most of these products, um, they have several different forms. So, like I say, go to the website, check it out. There's the LE Phenolic, but they had lots of other ones also listed. Um, this one's a f made out of a fine weave linen cotton cloth, and then it's impregnated with, as the name kind of tells you, phenolic resin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can make little supports. You can see this one's been machined. So, you know, this probably started out as a sheet that was that thick, and then all this was machined out and the holes drilled. But, um... You can get this in sheets, rods, angle stock, U channel. So yeah, it's you can get it in all kind of already preformed forms, and then they can do machining to it. But this is good for supports. A lot of times you'll see this actually used in switches and contacts and and the type of stuff where you need insulation, but you also need something that's strong and durable. You know, it kind of falls into the same category as some of these other products. Um, you know, if you're a design engineer, I'm sure you would know which one of these type products you would need for your specific application. But, um, yeah, like I say, I can even imagine some things, and I'll have to check on pricing and whatnot, because um, that's the nice thing. They do they do smaller, uh, you know, it says on the on the paper, low minimums. I mean, they sold, they sold me two sheets of products. You know, big company was happy to stand there and talk to me. You know, both of them stood there and talked for a long time. Really nice people. And all I wanted was two sheets of fish paper. And they, you know, took all that time out of their day just to sell me two sheets of fish paper. No problem. So, you know, really nice group of people to deal with. Um, another product, they have, you know, nylon. You know, it's a synthetic polymer, and I'm sure people are very familiar with nylon. They used it in everything other than your wife's nylons. <laughs> Bearings, gears, and valve seats, seals. Uh, very common for wear pads, which is probably where I'm most familiar with it, is uh, being used as a wear, you know, because it's, it's very wear resistant. But as you can see, again, you know, custom machine, nice little things that, you know, that was cut out of a sheet. But, you know, very flexible. You know, it's probably a gasket or a seal for something. A little sample there. Now, this next product, I actually, I'm interested in. <laughs> maybe getting some. Maybe even getting them to do me some custom. I think I have to take some measurements. But this is, and I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that. Trimer, I'm going to assume T-R-Y-M-E-R. -E and this is 4,000. But they have lots of them with different numbers. Like 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Um, but it's a phone. 
it's a rigid polyisosanurate material. Um, this apparently, this one here in my hand is apparently used commonly in refrigeration systems, so like reefer trucks and refrigerators and whatnot. But but it's very has a high compressive strength. So unlike a lot of foams that are really spongy, this is this is really rigid, and you can hear it's you know it's one of those type of foams. But as you can also see, it's machinable. So you know this was meant to fit around Lord knows what temperature sensor. I have no idea. It's just a sample. I have no idea what that was for. But that when I saw that, I was like, hmm, because they have. I don't know. I need to check again with the company. Some of the some of these. Uh, trimer products looks like they had a fairly high temperature resistance now this one like I say refrigeration so yeah I don't know if this stuff's any good for high heat the 4000 series but some of the other stuff look like it might be good for higher temperatures and what I'm thinking is this would be perfect for making crystal, little crystal oven covers or just for insulating crystals inside radios because uh, the kind of stuff that I work on here is you're very familiar with most everything is crystal synthesized. PLL circuits, even computers, you know, they have reference crystal oscillators in them. Um, but when you're dealing with sideband radios, you get frequency drift. What causes a lot of that frequency drift? Temperature change. And it's a lot of times the changing temperature of the crystal. The crystal's oscillator frequency, the, you know, the frequency that it actually oscillates at, changes in depending on what the temperature is. And that's why when you get into test instruments, high-end test instruments, you can get optional TCXOs and OCXOs, you know, oven-controlled crystal oscillators and stuff like that to help stabilize the crystal's temperature, which makes them much more stable. And a simple little trick you can do with a crystal is, is basically just strap a resistor to it. And it, that makes a, a poor man's crystal oven, but still you need to try to insulate it. I think something like this might be fine. It's rigid enough to where you could get something machined out where the walls are still fairly thin. And because it can't be too big because it needs to fit down inside of an existing radio. You know, it has other components surrounding it. But yeah, this stuff might actually turn out to be pretty good for making little crystal oven boxes. I, I need to play around with that. I'm, I might have to get... Get a little chunk, and like I said, I need to check on the temperature. I don't know, not, not that inside of a radio it gets hot. It's not like I need flame-proof stuff inside of a, a CB radio or an amateur radio, but it's something I need to check into because I'm thinking not so much temperature as it's going to melt. I'm what I'm worried about is the higher temperatures over extremely long periods of time. You know, 10, 20, 30 years. What's going to happen to that stuff? Is it going to degrade? Because um, actually, a good example of degraded foam can be found in that signal generator right there. It has an ovenized oscillator box in it. The problem is they made the ovenized, ovenized oscillator box in that thing out of foam. The white uh, white poly, what is that, polystyrene, I think. I think it's polystyrene foam. Same stuff they make like foam coffee cups out of. And it just has a couple big resistors in there to keep that entire area inside the box heated. The problem is, over decades, that foam actually starts to kind of melt. <laughs> I think Buddy did a repair video on one of those one time. You can go watch that over at the radio shop, and you'll see where he actually had to cut out uh, a new box to use in that thing, because the original one had basically just melted and disintegrated. So, yeah, I think this stuff would probably be a good, a good substitute for that. And I'm thinking durability over the long run. Um, more foam. Here's FM2. Um, this is just polystyrene foam, so you know, really good insulation. You know, foam has really good thermal uh, insulation value. Uh, this is basically the same stuff you can buy at the hardware store, <laughs> more or less, um, for you know, insulation in your house. You know, rigid, rigid foam insulation. But as you can see, they can do custom cutting. So, you know, if that's you need stuff like that. Um, and then the last little product sample here. This is another thing I didn't know they had because I didn't I didn't search the website before I went there. I wish I'd have gotten a sheet of this. This is poron. Again, I'm going to take a guess at the pronunciation. P o r o n poron poron. I don't know. I'm horrible at naming stuff. <laughs> but it's a, a microcellular urethane foam, and this can be, as you can see, custom cut. And this is can be laser cut. Um, I actually had some of this from years ago. I used to save pieces of this stuff from, you know, 
back in my previous life when I was a, a heavy truck mechanic, and I used to work on a lot of school buses and uh, emergency equipment, tow trucks, fire trucks, ambulances, and I used to do really advanced uh, warning light systems on those. And the one lighting system I used to install was made by Tomar Lighting. And all of their light, ha if you weren't installing an entire light bar, it came with like a chrome bezel and then the strobe bulb that fit into that. But to make it waterproof, so because you had to cut a hole into the interior of the vehicle to get wiring in, they came with gaskets. This is what that stuff was. I can just, the, the look, the feel, I know this is, this is what that material that they made their gaskets out of was. But when they shipped those gaskets, it was just basically a little thin ring. It was a lip gasket. And then the center, it was it was already laser cut, but it was still attached by like four little corners. And you just kind of punched out the centers. And I was smart enough to save all of those. <laughs> and over the years, I've pretty much used all of it. But yeah, this, this adhesive foam comes in handy for everything from sound deadening. Now, you know, they've got sound deadening products, but you know this is good in really small enclosures because it's got the adhesive back on it. So, you know, you can stick it to the inside, inside. Or if you've got a, a metal, piece of metal that... Um, like on the side of a radio chassis, if it heats up enough and it and there's enough stress on that sheet metal, it may bunk, it may pop. You know, if you've ever seen sheet metal do that, it'll bow in and out with the with temperature change as the as the the housing actually changes a little bit. You just stick a piece of this on the side of it that helps to deaden the sound when that happens. A lot of times you don't you can't even hear it anymore. Um, I've used this stuff a lot. The little pieces that I had, which actually the pieces were. A little bit bigger, you know, maybe about that big. And like I said, I think I've got one left. <laughs> but I use it inside microphones. So if I'm replacing an old dynamic microphone cartridge in, let's say, like a, uh, a Turner microphone or even an A-Static D104 lollipops and whatnot, well, if you're replacing an old dynamic mic cartridge with a little tiny electric microphone cartridge, there's a lot of empty space in there you need to fill up. Um... This, and that's what I've been using it for. I'll actually cut out a piece, like in the Turner microphones, where I'm basically making a cylinder, okay? Then I'll peel the backing off. I can kind of shove that down in the hole, and then it'll stick to the inside of the housing of the microphone head. That helps to cut down on sound, so, you know, sound deadening. Um, but it helps to cut down on a kind of a, because you can get kind of an echoey sound in some of those microphones if you just stick the microphone cartridge in it and leave that entire metal housing hollow. You'll get a little bit of an echoey, reverby sound. And putting a piece of this stuff in there helps to basically com completely eliminate that. So, yeah, I want to get a sheet of that. But, um, yeah, so there you go. I just thought, like I said, I told him, yeah, give me a couple products. I'll do a quick video on it. I mainly was, I was going to do it. I told him, I'm going to do a video on the fish paper, whether you want me to or not. Because <laughs> that's one of those products. I don't want to say it's hard to find, but it's, you just don't see it as much as you used to. The only source, matter of fact, I can reach over here and grab my roll. Here's the last roll that I bought. And that's what I said, you know, fibroid fish paper. And this was sold by GC Electronics. Now this another that's one thing I didn't like about the GC Electronics. This is only 0.01 inches. It's really thin, so it's it's a little bit flimsy. It works. Yeah, you know, you, you deal with what you can get. But you can see what I mean by if it stays rolled up for too long, you know, Lord knows this stuff's been sitting in a warehouse for five years rolled up like this. It's hard to get this stuff unrolled. <laughs> so, you know, it's nice that I was able to get that as a, a flat sheet stock, get this crinkly stuff out of the way, um, it's nice that I was able to get that as a flat sheet stock from them. Now, if they do ship that to you, because they can do custom cutting, um, which is actually, because <laughs> before I realized they were located in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, I, I was worried that they were going to do just that, roll it up to ship it. And I said, can you just cut it into like, you know, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper size? Because usually all I need are like a piece no bigger than that or smaller. I mean, a lot of times I'm cutting out little tiny pieces of it to use. I said, can you just cut it out to a standard size, like eight and a half by 11? I don't care. You cut it with scissors. I don't care if it's accurate or not. And just shove it in an envelope. But the, my main concern was ship it flat. And they said, sure. And, and in that email, that's when I noticed they were close by. So I just went over and got the sheets. But normally when they ship this in small quantities, like if you were only getting a couple sheets, they'd roll it up and ship it in a tube. Because the sheet is so big, that would probably ship you know, through like FedEx or UPS 
or the post office, that would be balloon rate just because the package is so big. It may be thin, but you know, other dimensions are huge. So they roll it up. Now, the advantage there is it's only going to be rolled up for a couple days from the time they stick it in a tube and it arrives at your door and then you can unroll it and it'll flatten out. Like I say, the problem with this stuff is this stuff's been rolled up for Lord knows how many years and man, I just I just know from experience, man, it's hard to get this stuff flattened out after it's been rolled up for an extremely long time. So, yep, if you need any um, fish paper or insul basically any type of insulating products or machinable gaskets and you know electric that are electrically insulating um you know give american micro a, a a call or email them um ty was you know basically i emailed and bam i had an instant reply um very nice people to work with actually i walked in the front door of the building and ty and jolie's office was the whole way in the back and actually uh, the guy walked me the whole way back through the building so you know, i kind of got it got to eyeball some some of the facility and um, yeah, they got all kinds of stock in there. Um, yeah, parts parts geek like me just ah just drooling the whole way as I'm walking back through the warehouse area there. <laughs> but um, anyhow, there's their website if you want to take a look. AmericanMicroInc.com, and uh, let them get you squared away because, like I say, really nice people to deal with and uh, have a really good stock of different types of materials. Yeah, of course, as soon as I turn the camera off and I get to cutting this up, I had an idea. So I wanted to really quick tack on a little piece to the end here. Uh, it's a suggestion for the company, and if you think this is a good idea, leave a comment below, and then they can check back at the video later on a few weeks from now and see just how many people might be interested. Um, for people like me, I'm not a manufacturer. I'm not buying products like this by the pallet load. <laughs> this is a year's or more supply worth of this stuff for me. Um, so, And I use small pieces. That's why I've now cut this down into more manageable pieces. It's easy to store. Here's my suggestion. Make a kind of like a, I don't want to call it a sample pack, not something like this, but something, you know, around this size. Like, you know, the 8 and a half, 11, these are, I think I cut these like 10 by 12 or something, whatever the heck I cut them. But uh, something that's easily mailed, fl you know, flat. That way it doesn't need to be rolled up because honestly, most people like me, repair shops or even electronic hobbyists, we don't need really large pieces. We're usually dealing with something this size or smaller. So, you know, an eight, something that's cut by an eight and a half by 11, you know, the size of a sheet of paper is fine and we can trim it down to whatever size we need. It's just getting the stock into our hands for, you know, for a lot of people, that's the problem is finding this stuff. Um, so make up like a little sample pack, maybe, um, of the fish paper and maybe the FP, what was the flame proof one? Because like I said, man, I really wish I'd have picked up <laughs> this one, the EFR. I wish I'd have gotten some of this because this is bendable. So, you know, make up maybe in a, a, a little pack that has, you know, like the fish paper or the EFR, or maybe a mix of both, like two or three different thicknesses. Um, 0.02 is a really good thickness for using in electronics. Sometimes it'd be nice to have maybe a little bit thicker. So, you know, maybe include a sheet of like 0.02, uh, 0.03 maybe, um, you know, and then of fish paper and the EFR in a little pack, like one or two sheets of each thickness in each type or one of each or something. Um, and you could have them prepackaged. That way, you know, the, the guy you have cutting all this stuff out isn't doing them one at a time. You could already have, you know, a couple of them prepackaged in an envelope sitting on a shelf in the shipping department. And when an order comes in, all they got to do is slap a shipping label on it and out the door it goes. So, you know, there's a, an idea. Another thing is FR4. Um, circuit board material. I use this stuff, and this isn't just a suggestion for the company, but this is for people that deal with electronics. You very frequently need to make little brackets to hold stuff. <laughs> so, you know, you need a, a, a just a, a bracket, but it doesn't need, you know, you don't need a 90 degree angle bracket. You just need a straight piece to mount something to. And that's why I use FR4. Four. <laughs> I, I buy little little packs of this stuff. I think I got this last pack probably on eBay. But it's basically the same material. Slightly different color than the uh, the standard green 
FR4, which they can get different colors. Uh, green is normally the standard color. You'll see the kind of, you know, transparent green. Actually, you can see my hand even through this stuff, but this is kind of a tannish yellow color. But you have, like, uh, maybe, uh, or even include a sheet, something like this, in with the package like this. Have, like, a hobby electronics uh, package. So, a couple sheets of uh, fish paper, a couple sheets of maybe the... Uh, the, the flame-proof, basically, version, the EFR. Um, like I say, the main difference there is one of those, you know, this is foldable, um, where this, if you get you get too far with it, it, it cracks and breaks. And actually, let's try that. Now that I have a piece of this, we'll see, and this doesn't have the adhesive on it. I want to see how... Yeah, this is more flexible than that old stuff. Yeah, actually, that even that bends pretty blasted well. <laughs> That actually holds the shape pretty darn good, even with not being roll crimped, which is what they do with this. They're just taking a roll die to form those little crease lines in there. But actually, yeah, it didn't break. Now, I'm sure if I flex it back, it's going to snap off. Huh, maybe not. <laughs> and this stuff's more flexible than I thought it was. Yeah, you can see it's starting to tear there. But yeah, it's being flexed several times. But um, anyhow, like I say, maybe a couple sheets of the fish paper, a couple sheets of the EFR, maybe one or two sheets of cut the same size, you know, approximately 8.5 by 11 or 8 by 11 or something like that. Something that'll fit in a standard legal envelope, you know, full-size envelope. Um, Thickness-wise, this is, what is this? This is 0.067 board that I have here. And for most applications, this is perfect for whatever I, I need to make a little bracket or a stand-up. Because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll cut off a piece, might be about that wide and like that tall. And that allows me to mount another circuit board up here, like at a second level or something. And I can put two little angle brackets on it. But I don't need to worry about bending stuff. It's it's straight cuts. I can cut this with a pair of tin snips because um, you can cut you know with, within reason. If you get too thick, you can't cut it with tin snips. But you know, actually, here's a piece that I had cut off with a pair of snips. So you know, this wasn't cut with any type of sawing instrument. I just you can see the little ridges there from the teeth on the on the tin snips. But yeah, you can cut this. You can cut a fiberglass FR4 board with a pair of tin snips. So yeah, maybe include like one or two pieces of uh, fiberglass circuit board material, a couple sheets of the EFR, a couple sheets of the fish paper, and a little variety pack for the electronic hobbyist. Um, so you know, there's just an idea. And if you think that's a good idea, you know, if you if they were to make something like that available, would you be interested in it? Um, if there's enough interest. I don't see why they they wouldn't do it, <laughs> you know. As long as it's not, they're not just going to be making one pack for one person on the other side of the planet. As long as there's enough people who are interested, they may do that. So just just a little thought I thought I would throw out there.